The Chickens of Cinema show was getting tired. My agent said there were three months maximum left before it died on the road. And then what? One night I was in a dumpy motel halfway from somewhere to somewhere else and I had a powerful dream. I was at the wheel of a huge truck, a big rig they used to call them, maybe they still do. But I wasn't hauling live pigs or apples or car parts, but rather thousands of cans of the rarest silent films from Signature Studios, a previously unknown production house from the golden age of silent film. They were the old nitrate kind of films, extremely flammable. I was hauling them cross country from Los Angeles to the Library of Congress, where they would be installed in the vast archive with a ceremony of fanfare and pomp in my honor. In the desert somewhere, the load caught fire. I escaped with my life, but the films were history, quite literally. And then, once I woke up and had a revolting little complimentary breakfast in the motel office, it hit me. Why not invent Signature Studios with a fabricated history, like a poverty row lot, as they used to call the scrappy little Hollywood production outfits in the teens, twenties, and thirties? In my story, I had taken a wrong turn in the desert in the chicken mobile and came upon a storage depot that had perfectly preserved the wildly unstable nitrate film. Tons of business records, fascinating old ads, insightful correspondence with film exhibitors were not in great shape because of insect damage. But the films? Pristine. So that was my start. I could fake film clips that I could scrape up from different places. I found a kid, kind of liked movies if he could stream them. He didn't know Humphrey Bogart from Edmund O'Brien but he knew how to code, as they say these days about doing computer stuff. Among many other things, he showed me how he could fake film graininess. Clean and grainy. So I was off and running, and the first thing I did was to try and get back onto the academic symposium circuit. Finally, Professor Meyer David would be back where he belonged. Alas, it was not meant to be. Footage. For example, there's black and white footage of the first the session I attended, the door opened and she walked in. I studiously and avoided and eye contact, but difference. at the first coffee so break, I got buttonholed out in the hall. I might have known I'd find you here peddling your moldy crap. Signature studios, indeed. How brain damaged do you think these scholars are? I could try to nail you for fraud, but frankly, you're not worth my time and trouble. Why don't you go back to your fetishized togas and sandals? Oh, here's an idea. Gratis. Exploration of the significance of the beach party films in American youth culture of the 1960s and how they helped revive the career of a fossilized Buster Keaton. You're welcome. I never went back to the symposium, spent the rest of the day wandering the corridors, Reality began to wilt and curl at the edges, like film running through an overheated projector. The mists of time clouded my vision, and I began to slip backwards further and further. Mom was not an old lady anymore, tending her chickens on the edge of the California desert, but now a vibrant young homemaker. And where was I? Who was I? How did I fit in? <laughs>